square root of 31 and round it to the nearest tenth is approximately 5.6. Now technically I should be doing plus or minus, but since we're talking about length and width, I'm just going to use the positive 5.6. All right, number 25 is going to be a lot of fun here. On 25, we're going to have to use Pythagorean Theorem, which is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. My a and b are my legs, so I've got to square those and add it up to 20 squared. So I've got x squared plus x plus 4 squared equals 20 squared x squared. Now remember when I square a binomial, I get x squared. I double the middle, which is 8x, and 4 squared is 16, and that equals 20. x squared and x squared is 2x squared plus 8x plus 16 equals 20. I need to move the 20 to the other side, so that's 2x squared plus 8x minus 4 equals 0. Now I have to solve. I notice that they all have 2 in front, so I'm going to divide by 2, and that gives me much nicer x squared plus 4x minus 2 equals 0. Now I'd like to factor that. That seems to be the easiest way. However, I can't think of anything that will multiply to give me 2 and add to give me 4. I could do complete the square or the quadratic formula. For this time, I'm just going to complete the square. So let's get busy. x squared plus 4x plus blank is equal to positive 2 plus blank. See that negative 2 moved to the other side. This 2 out here, we can just keep on hold out here. Half of 4 is 2, and 2 squared is 4, and that equals 6. Then I need to take the square root of each side, and x plus 2 is plus or minus the square root of 6. Move the 2 to the other side. Final answer is negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 6. Okay, now I'm asked to find how many solutions using the discriminant, and the discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. A is 2, B is negative 5, and if I move the 8 to the left, putting it into standard form, C is 8. So B squared would be 25 minus 4 times 2 times 8, which is 25, 4 times 2 is 8 times 8 is 64, and this is definitely going to be a negative number. If it's negative, that gives you no solutions. Okay, number 27, I have a formula and they give me the length of 60. So that's going to be 60 equals 9.78t squared. All I need to do is divide by 9.78 and then I'm going to go back and take the square root of both sides. So I, uh, when I divide I get 6 Point one, let's see, what does it tell? Round to the nearest tenth, so it's going to be 6.13, which is 6.1, is equal to t squared. Then I need to take the square root of both sides, and let me see, i got to take the square root of 6.1. And that gives me 2.476, so that is t equals 2.5. I'm not going to use the plus or minus because this is talking about length. Number 28 is very similar to that last problem. All we have to do is take this formula that they give us, s equals pi r squared. We're going to use 3.14 for pi, and it already gives us a surface area of 60. So that's 60 equals 4 times 3.14 r squared. Go ahead and multiply the 4 times 3.14, and that is 12.56. And that gives, oh, now I have r squared. Now I need to divide by 12.56 on both sides, and that gives me 4.77. So I'm going to put 4.8 equals r squared, taking the square root of each side. That gives me 2.18, which is 2.2, and what are we talking about here? Um, 
Oh, for the radius. Feet. All right, 56. We've actually done this problem before. I believe it was on the last test, but you have to prepare for it because it's going to be on the next test as well. The larger rectangle, we have to find the area, so that's going to be x minus 4 times x plus 3. x times x is x to the second. x times 3 is 3x. Three negative 4 times x is negative 4x, and negative 4 times 3 is minus 12. Combining my x's, I am left with x squared minus x minus 12. Now I need to find the area of the smaller rectangle. Well, that's really simple because 3 times x is just 3x. Now I need to find the area of the shaded region. So I'm going to take my x squared minus x minus 12 and subtract the 3x from the middle. That gives me x squared minus 4x minus 12. Now it says that the shaded region is 48, so I equal 48, and now I'm going to move the 48 to the left-hand side, and that gives me negative 60. Now, can, the easiest way to do this is by factoring, as long as you can think of something that multiplies to give me 60 and adds to give me 4. Okay, so I just thought of it. It is x minus 10 and x plus 6. That multiplies to give me negative 60 and adds to give me negative 4. The x minus 10, what can you plug in for x to make it 0? That's a 10. And what could you plug in this x to make it 0? That would be 6. So we had to write a polynomial, then solve for x, and I have solved x is 10. Good job. Well, that was fun. All right, now we have one more of these problems to go. And it's very similar to the last one that we had. I have to square the x plus square the x plus 3, and that is equal to 15 squared. That gives me x squared plus x squared double the middle is 6x plus 9 equal 15 squared and 15 times... Oh, 225. Combining the x's gives me 2x squared plus 6x plus 9 is 225. Moving the 225 to the left, I'm going to subtract 9. I have 2x squared plus 6x minus 216 equals 0. Again, I notice they're all divisible by 2. So that's 2 parentheses x squared plus 3x minus 108 equals 0. Now, I don't know if I can think of something that multiplies to give me 108, so I think I'm going to do the quadratic formula. x equals negative 3 plus or minus the square root. 3 squared is 9 minus 4 times 1 times negative 108 all over 2a. Notice I'm using a is 1, b is 3, and c is 108 because that's the same thing as if I take the 2 out or if I don't. Now I need to do the discriminant. In my calculator for my discriminant, I've got to multiply 4 times 108, and that is going to be a positive number. And I figured this out. It is 432. Oh, wait a minute. Did I put the 9 in there? 4 times 108 is 432. And then I've got to take 9. Whoa, what's that? I'm going to take 9 and subtract 432. And that is negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 423 divided by 2. Now, if you had an Inspire calculator, you would be expected to divide it out, and if not, you'd be stopping right there. All right, we have a test on Tuesday. I will be staying on Monday afternoon until from 2.30 until 3.15, and Tuesday morning, we will be there bright and early at 6.40 a.m. All right, looking forward to seeing y'all. I hope you had a great weekend. Bye-bye.